By coming with us along this journey today to learn about the traditional ways of the Lenape people who inhabited this land, now known as Staten Island, during the Eastern Woodland period, you also learn quite a bit about all of the various ways that Lenape utilized fire in their everyday lives. It was absolutely indispensable to them, just as it is to us today. But if they couldn't go out and buy a lighter or matches or push a button on a thermostat or turn a knob on a stove, how exactly did they make fire? Was it as simple as rubbing two sticks together? Kind of yes and kind of no. But really what they had to do was master the amazing art of harnessing one of the most magical forces known as friction. But what is friction? Friction is actually a very common heat energy that is created by rubbing two things together. It's the exact process that the Lenape use to create fire by friction, but it's also something that you are probably very familiar with in your everyday life. If you just imagine walking to school on a day that's pretty cold and you forgot your mittens, what do you do? You take your hands and you rub them together. And the faster you rub them and the harder you push, something really special is happening. And you're creating heat between your hands and warming yourself up. And it's the exact same process. Fire needs three things to survive. The first thing is a heat source. And we already talked about that and it is called friction. The second thing it needs is good oxygen flow. And the third thing a fire needs to grow big and strong is known as fuel. And the Lenape would have used varying shapes and sizes of natural materials to fuel their fires. Starting from smaller, fuzzier pieces, maybe using milkweed fluff or pine needles, old animal nests, corn husks, or dry leaves. The next size up to make a nice, strong fire was known as kindling, and thin branches and sticks were used for that. And the next size up was known as a fuel log. The larger the logs and the more you added, the bigger your fire could be and the longer it could burn. The Lenape would use three different fire making kits from a smaller one and a simpler one like this, which is a hand drill made of just a simple long woody stalk and a flat wooden fireboard, inserting the spindle into the fireboard and spinning it to create that friction. This small fire kit would have gone with the men on hunting and trapping and fishing expeditions. The next largest fire making apparatus was known as a bow drill kit. It was the same exact idea as the hand drill with a horizontal fireboard on the ground and a vertical spindle that would be used to spin and create friction and focus it into that socket on the ground. But instead of the Lenape using their hands to spin the spindle around, they would attach it to a bow that they would make from a nice, long, sturdy branch, attach a piece of cordage that they would have made from natural materials like we already talked about, and use the bow to spin the spindle in place. So they would put it right into the socket, put their foot over the fireboard to keep it secure, find a handhold made from some sort of really sturdy material. This one is a stone that I found. They may have also used wood or bone. And then after putting all the pressure and the weight of their body over the spindle through the handhold, they would start to bow. After creating the perfect combination of heat energy, fuel, and oxygen flow, a baby coal is born and can be added to a tinder bottle to add more oxygen to and blow it into flame. If you see, every time I blow, I'm feeding it the oxygen that it needs, and I'm also pinching together the leaves so that it's adding the fuel as well. A 
we're going to get closer and closer to the fire structure so that we are right where we need to be when the flames pop up. Open it up and see what's happening inside. And I left this open door of the teepee here so that now I can add it and complete our fire structure. The largest of the three fire making apparatuses was called a pump drill. And just like the hand drill and bow drill before it, there was a spindle and a fireboard that when spun would build friction enough to create a burning coal that would then be blown into a flame. It was just much larger. And it was used inside the longhouse by an elder who could operate it from a seated position. They were the traditional creators and tenders of the fire at home. And the kids would gather around to learn about fire tending and learn from their stories. Not only was the fire itself useful, but the charcoal left behind could also be used for various purposes. It was actually one of the original writing implements and is still commonly used today for art. The Lenape would use the dust from the charcoal to grind down and add to their clay to temper their pottery. And they would also grind it down and add to the sap from pine trees to create pitch glue, just as you'd use any glue today. Charcoal was also used as a component to camouflage to disguise Lenape hunters as they stalked their prey. And in addition, it was important medicinally to rid the body of toxins. Now that we have a pretty great idea of just how hard it was and still is to make a fire by hand, we can think back to some of the other things that we learned throughout this Lenape virtual lesson. And we can really consider how hard work and teamwork came together to ensure that the Lenape lifestyle was just as vibrant and successful as it really was. If we remember, the fire in the hearth was a central space in the longhouse, not only for people to gather and to warm themselves, but to share stories. Fire was used to fell tall tulip trees and turn them into canoes for transportation. Fire was used to cook and preserve different meats and fishes that were brought in from the hunt. It was used to roast nuts and seeds from foraging, and it was even used as an agricultural technique called slash and burn. Fire was absolutely of the utmost importance to all of Lenape people and their daily lives to make sure that their people not only survived, but truly thrived. Thank you for joining us on this virtual lesson and exploring the life, culture, and history of the Lenape people. It is a great honor that the Greenbelt Education Department is able to offer this accurate historical portrayal of the Lenape people during the Eastern Woodlands time period. Today, there are three federally recognized Lenape tribes in the United States, with many other smaller groups and organizations awaiting federal or state recognition. Although we are exploring the Lenape people during the Eastern Woodlands time period when they lived in wigwams, used fire to flush wildlife, hunt and gathered and fish, today the Lenape people live in apartments and houses. They drive cars, they play video games, and go to school just like you and I. But there's no doubt that the Lenape people and their ancestors shape both the world they lived in and the world we live in today. Thank you for joining us. And if you're interested in more virtual programs, please visit us at sigreenbelt.org.